Hey guys, it's Tony Paladin, and today we're going to do a short video on general shoulder injuries. These type of injuries are quite specific. They are in a pain score of less than 6 to 7 out of 10, and they are mostly in a shoulder that is relatively stable. So if your shoulder has subluxed, dislocated, is very, very unstable, uh, I would not continue with these exercises. And if your pain scar is 6 to 7 upwards out of 10, again, I'd caution you with regards to continuing with these exercises uh, because you probably need some form of uh, actual physical rehabilitation. So in terms of general shoulder injuries, uh, we, we're talking about things that where with lowish pain scores, mild instabilities, uh, things where you've maybe picked up something awkwardly, you've done a little bit too much at the gym, um, maybe you picked up a handbag at an awkward angle, and really what the symptoms are is that you're getting pain, the pain is kind of unspecified, you can't quite tell where it is, and in terms of mobility, you're struggling to do basic things like putting your hand behind your back or up above your head. Uh, so generally, with regards to the safe movements, is that anything under 90 degrees is going to be safe. Any of the movements that we do above 90 degrees or above shoulder height, again, I want to just caution, caution you with regards to the execution of the exercises. Um, just an important point, before we continue with the rehab exercises, it is vitally, vitally important that you keep the shoulder in a neutral position when you are going to do your exercises. Uh, what this effectively means is that if you look at the structure of the shoulder, there's a little bone that sits over here called the acromion process. You want to try and make sure that that bone is the approximate distance from your thumb to your baby finger away from your ear. So if you can retain that orientation when you do your exercises, the shoulder is going to be in a safe position. Now, the reason for this is that if you can hold the orientation of the acromion process, i.e. the middle of the shoulder, away from your ear, it means that the shoulder stabilizes the serratus anterior, the lats, all of these muscles down here that hold the shoulder in the correct position are firing optimally, uh, and then you don't risk further injury to the shoulder. Okay, the first exercise that we're going to do, very, very basic, uh, we're going to turn, lie on our backs, <coughs> and we're going to basically take the arm out to the side. Okay, we want to try and keep it as close to 90 degrees as possible, and then just allow your elbow to rest on the floor. The exercise is basically in allowing the shoulder to rotate internally and rotate externally. What we're trying to do with these, uh, with these movements is to try and get your palm to touch the floor, and then try and get your hand to touch the floor on the external rotation. So what we're effectively trying to do is get as much rotation through the shoulder as possible while the floor is supporting your elbow so that you don't put additional stress on the shoulder joint. If this exercise is fairly easy, you can take a light weight and again do the exercise where as we work into external and internal rotation, you'll feel that there's just a little additional resistance that you need to work against in order to get the rotators of the rotator cuff activating. Okay. The following exercise, taking the hand up in front of you, again, activating into your lats to hold the shoulder down, and then just dropping the hand down up above you, and then creating a nice pendulum where you drop the hand down towards the floor. Again, very, very important that you keep the shoulders down so that the lats are nice and active, and you really, really feel all of the muscles in and around the shoulder activating with limited pain. The following exercise, keep the hand again in the same starting position as the previous exercise, and then just drop the hand up to the side, and again across the body. Right, the next exercise, taking the arms and the hand into a push-up position, again with a light weight, and just activating up and coming down. Focusing on keeping the lats activated, so we're holding the shoulder down into the correct position, and then again just driving up towards the roof. Okay, next exercise we're going to do, again with the light weights in the hand, is setting the shoulder so that it's stable, and then rotating and drawing little circles. 
the bigger the circle, the more difficult the exercise is. Generally, I like to do this exercise in both an anti-clockwise and a clockwise direction so that all the muscles in the rotator cuff get a chance to activate in both orientations. If all of these have gone relatively to plan with little pain, we can advance the exercise slightly. We, we then move on to the side. You can use your top hand to support you. You place your elbow underneath your shoulder and you base out on your knee. You activate into the stomach and then you lift up and come down, making sure that we are keeping shoulder stability so we're not allowing the shoulder to move out of its position, but we're holding it down, activating up, coming down. Just introducing a little bit of load into the shoulder uh, with relatively little pain. If these feel okay, we can then advance it a, a step further where we remove the hand, we put it on the body, and then we lift up. If this is relatively easy, we can then advance it further by straightening the leg and lifting that up to just add a little bit of additional weight. From there, we can go onto the hands and knees, keeping the hands underneath the shoulders, drawing them down, activating into the stomach, and then just lifting up into the air, and then slowly down. Again, making sure that the shoulders are not lifting up, they're being held down in an active position. From here, we can drop into the elbows, and go into a bridge position, holding the shoulders down, and then just rocking back and forward, allowing the shoulders to be activated so that they don't move. And then lastly, into a push-up position, shoulders being drawn down, body straight, dropping down, and coming up. In an affected shoulder, you might find that you can't go all the way to the floor, which is fine. All you need to do is go down as much as you can, staying within a pain score of less than 3 out of 10. We can finish this all off with a stretch. Very, very nice stretch. Not too many people know about is keeping your elbow nice to the body, keeping your forearm 90 degrees to your upper arm, using your hand, and then internally rotating your arm, stretching into it, and then drawing up. What you can do with this exercise is that you can give a slight resistance with your top hand and then use the rotators of the affected arm to push up, and then you use the top hand again to push the arm down working into an internally rotated position. Really a good stretch just to stretch out the posterior capsule of the shoulder. And if done quite regularly, you'll find that you get relatively good relief into the shoulder over a couple of days of doing this movement. Great guys, I hope you enjoyed that short video. Again, a couple of basic exercises. As mentioned earlier, if any of them cause severe pain or severe instability, please stop, do not continue them, and then go and see a therapist that can help you manage your shoulder further.